Good morning. It's Tuesday on March the 2nd. I can't believe we're already into March, but it is March the 2nd. Good to see you this morning, and uh, or at least uh, see what I think is you out there this morning. Uh, but good to visit with you. And uh, let's look at chapter 14 of the book of Revelation this morning. Now, you remember I said it's hard to read Revelation thinking chronologically uh, linear in time because there's so many intervening things or parenthetical things. Chapter 14 appears to be another one of those uh, uh, times where John is shown a panorama of the remainder of time, the panorama, especially the remainder of the time of the, the seven-year tribulation period and even into the uh, millennial kingdom of God. And uh, so think of it in terms of that, that he says, and, and here's what happens the rest of the, the time. And then we're going to come back in uh, chapter 16, 17, 18, right on through there and uh, do some specifics within this time frame. So he starts out in chapter 14, after he's talked about the mark of the beast, he talks about the Lamb of God and the 144,000. Now you remember the 144,000 were believers who were Jewish believers, 12 from each tribe, who came to Christ as a result of the two witnesses that you remember were killed and rose again. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, they have been traveling all over the earth, spreading the gospel, teaching, sharing, and uh, uh, they have... Uh, uh, untold numbers have come to Christ uh, or become believers. They're going through the tribulation. Now, don't misunderstand that. They're going through the tribulation. But as a result of this 144,000, they have heard the gospel and, and they've come to Christ. And so <clears throat> what we're going to look at now is, is kind of the result of what happened to them. And then the angels, uh, three different angels, making announcements or pronouncements about what is coming on the earth. So with that in mind, remember where we are, we're middle of the, of the uh, uh, tribulation period, coming up to that middle part. And in, in chapter 14, verse 1, <clears throat> John said, Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb. No mistaking who that is. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and he said, There before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion. Now, there are some who believe that this Mount Zion is the heavenly mountain, that he was in heaven. There are others who believe that it's a picture of Christ when he comes back to earth, standing literally on the earth at the beginning of the thousand year period. But he's standing on Mount Zion and either one, it fits, it works. And I don't, I can't say dogmatically which one it is. And he says, and with him, 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Now that sounds like he's literally on earth and the 144,000 are standing with him. And see, they have a name written on their forehead too, the mark of the father, just like the others have the mark of the beast. He says in, in verse two, and I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and, a loud, uh, and like a loud peal of thunder. Again, impending uh, doom, we don't know. This one is accompanied by the sound of a harpist. Now, usually the harp signifies joy and praise. So he says, the sound I heard was that like, not wasn't, it doesn't say it was, but it was like that of harpists playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. So whether they were in heaven and standing before the throne or whether they were on earth at the literal Mount Zion and they could see into heaven, Regardless, it says they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. Now, again, I'm not saying whether they're on earth or whether they're in heaven, but here's what they're doing. They're praising the Lord and they're singing a song to God who has redeemed them from the earth. And it's a song that only they can sing because they're the ones who've gone through it. And it says, these, who, uh, these are those who did not defile themselves with women. They remain virgins. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. They were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits to God 
and the lamb, no lie was found in their mouths and they are blameless. These are those who've been pronounced blameless before the Lord. And then in verse six, he goes to the announcements or the pronouncements of the angels. He said, then I saw another angel flying in midair and he had the eternal gospel. Now, everything in the Bible centers around the good news of Jesus Christ. But here, this angel is making a pronouncement about the eternal gospel, the eternal good news that doesn't necessarily deal with the blood of Christ, but he sees God as the, or he shows God as the creator God. He said he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. And he said in a loud voice, and here's the bottom line, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Folks, it's over, he says. It's over. God is finished because the hour of the judgment has come. So he says, worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. He says, if you've rejected his son, you've rejected the creator. And if you're gonna worship God the Father, it means listening to the good news and responding to it. And worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And then a second angel appears. A second angel followed and said, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. He's talking here about uh, uh, those who rejected Christ in the tribulation period. And we're gonna come to that later on. And I think it's verse uh, chapter 17. And we're gonna show what the fallen Babylon is. We're not gonna take it time to do it this morning, but we'll get to that. That's what the second angel said. Fallen, fallen is the Babylon the great. That's why I said this is a panoramic view of that future. And then he says in verse nine, a third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or on their hand, again, there's the literal location of it. They too will drink the wine of God's fury. Now here he's saying, if you receive the mark of the beast, you're gonna be the recipient of God's fury. Folks, the Bible tells us it's a, it's a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Wow. If anyone worships a beast, its image receives its mark in the forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured, now listen to this, full strength into the cup of his wrath. And they will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the lamb, and the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. A description of the coming hell for the pardon me. And then he says, there will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image. Talking about those who go through that last part of the tribulation with the mark of the beast on them, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. And he says, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. In other words, they're not going to be protected from the tribulation. Those who love the Lord, they're not going to be protected. They're going to go through that all of the horror. That's why I beg you, if you don't know Jesus, if, you don't, if you're not sure, make sure you know Jesus on this side of the rapture because these folks are gonna go through that. And he said in verse 13, then I heard a voice from heaven say, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them. And then the last thing he says here, is talking about the, it, it, it even gets worse. <laughs> he says, there will be a, a time that will be cut short and death will be welcome for those who believe the Lord, but there's gonna be more. And let me just tell you what it is. I, I hate to do this, but this is another one of those cliffhangers. We'll have to look at that tomorrow. So check us Wednesday morning. And we'll get to this when he says, I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man. Woo. That's bringing us to what we call the battle of Armageddon. We'll get on to that in the morning. God bless you. Have a great day.
and we'll see you in the morning.